Don't feel bad. If these are things you don't know, when we first started searching after our whole bed bug fiasco and we said, oh, let's get an RV, blah, blah, blah. Okay, somebody said fifth wheel. I said, what's the fifth wheel? Right, we no, didn't know anything. We didn't know anything. Hey guys, it's Izzy and MJ from Endless RVing. And in this video, we are gonna talk about the basics of RVing. With so many people getting into RVing, we felt it was necessary to make such a video. So if you're new to the channel, we invite you to subscribe below, hit the notification bell, and let's get into it. Okay, so let's start ground level, the basics. What is an RV? It's a recreational vehicle, okay? There's, it's broken down into two major types. You're gonna have your towable RVs and then your motorized RVs. Motorized RVs are the ones that have a motor and a drivetrain. <laughs> towable are ones that you would tow. MJ is gonna break it down even further on each uh, category. Now don't feel bad. If these are things you don't know, when we first started searching after our whole bed bug fiasco and we said, oh, let's get an RV, blah, blah, blah. Okay, somebody said fifth wheel. I said, what's a fifth wheel? Right, we no, didn't know anything. We didn't know anything. So you have all different kinds. Our first one, number one, it was a travel trailer. All right, that also we can include destination trailers as well. Those are pretty cool. Then you're gonna have your fifth wheels. Now fifth wheels will also be known as fivers, okay? You have pop-up cameras. Campers. You have truck campers. Now, just touching a little bit more on what MJ said, because you might not know the difference between a travel trailer and a fifth wheel. So a travel trailer is gonna be bumper towed. So the hitch is gonna be, or the hitch receiver will be, it will go actually to the bumper of whatever your tow vehicle is. A fifth wheel or a fiver, the actual pin box will go into the bed, right? So you can't tow a fifth wheel with like a Honda CRV. <laughs> You're gonna need a pickup or a heavy duty truck mm -hmm. because it actually is gonna lay in the bed. What that does, it's, it's gonna be more stable towing. It's also gonna be a lot bigger. It's gonna be heavier. Now, when you're talking about pop-ups, mm -hmm. those will be considered like travel trailers. They would uh, be bumper towed, but it pops up kind of like a tent. Pop up and out. And then the truck campers, those are campers that are actually put on, on the bed of a truck, right? So it goes on, you're not towing anything behind you. It's actually on permanently on, well, not permanently, but it's, you're not taking it off when you right. get to camp. You're, you're using that bed as a, a platform for the RV. Then we're gonna move into toy haulers. Now, toy haulers are for those of you that like to carry your toys, your golf carts, your motorcycles, things like that. So that's a, another thing. And I like the toy haulers because they do have, you know, you get the, the porch and, and things like that. So that's an option. Another thing, then we're gonna move into the, the classes, the class A's. Class A is what we have. You have class B's, class C's and super C's. All right, so now we're gonna talk a little bit on the motorized, real quick summary of them. There's a couple different types. You have your class A, which is easy to remember. It looks like a bus. Big front windshield, flat front. You're gonna have the cargo bays underneath where it's gonna be a lot of storage. Almost every time, pretty much every time, the bedroom's gonna be in the back of the unit. They're gonna come in either gas or diesel. Usually they range in length from the smaller ones are about 28 feet, 27 feet, all the way up to 45 feet. 45 feet will traditionally be the max. Now, moving on, you're gonna to move to your class B. Now, class B are what essentially a van, right? A van conversion. They're going to be on either Mercedes or a Ford, or I'm trying to think, I think Ram has a, a chassis now, but it's going to look like a van. Usually the roof will be a little bigger, no slide outs, very small. These people like these because they have a small footprint. They get good gas mileage and you can kind of bring them everywhere. What they, I they didn't, blend in. didn't mention actually is a B plus. Well, I'm going to talk well. about that also. Okay. Yeah, I didn't so, put that in the list before. So a B plus, and there's several manufacturers that are doing that now, it's gonna be on like that van chassis. Perfect example of this is the Airstream Atlas, mm -hmm. but it's usually gonna have a slide. Whereas the B won't have a slide. The B plus is gonna give you a slide, usually one, and that's gonna give you a little more living space. Mm -hmm. Now we're gonna move on to the C. A uh, C is gonna be on usually a truck chassis, a Ford truck chassis. It's gonna have the cab, the cap, the front cap kind of goes over the front of the truck. These are your classic ones that you used to see like in the 70s and 80s, mm -hmm. but they're still really popular. They can have upwards of three slides, a lot of them, and uh, they, they offer good space. They're relatively affordable compared to the Bs and especially compared to the As. You can get into them starting around $60,000 and your top end ones would still be 
far less than what a, a entry level class A will be. And then you have your C's and your, your super C's. Now super C's is being kind of used loosely nowadays. Traditionally the super C's would be on your heavy duty truck chassis. So for example, like your Freightliner Cascadia or your Freightliner M2 chassis, a commercial truck chassis, they would then build the house box behind. Now, due to the popularity of them and the marketing, they're starting to move into other chassis, uh, Ford F550 chassis, other Class C specific chassis that are not really commercial trucks. But the big advantages of the Super C's is not only the payload capability, towing capability. Most Super C's, even the lower end ones, are like 15,000 pounds. Some of the commercial grade ones, you know, the, the big Renegades and the show haulers, 40,000 pounds of uh, towing capacity. So that's kind of a quick breakdown on the motorized units to help you guys understand a little better. So the next thing is we're, so we're going to add a couple terms dealing with the types of RVs and just, you know, it just has a little to do with RVs. The first one is dry weight. If you hear dry weight, that basically means the weight of your RV with no fluids, no fuel, no cargo, no passengers. Now, now if you have a towable, it's going to be, like MJ said, the weight of that empty, right? Mm -hmm. Without any mm -hmm. holding tanks, any of that stuff. So moving along, we're gonna talk about tongue weight. Now, tongue weight is the amount of weight between your hitch and your actual hitch receiver. So say you have a trailer, where that goes attached to your ball on your truck or whatever your tow vehicle is, the amount of weight on the front of that trailer is gonna be your hitch weight. Now, if we're gonna move on to fifth wheels, you're gonna have the pin box, which is on the front of the fifth wheel that goes into the bed of a truck. Whatever the weight is on that pin is gonna be referred to as your pin weight. Now this is pretty important because uh, tr tow vehicles, they, they are gonna have a maximum amount of weight that they can carry, payload that they can carry in their bed or on the bumper. So this is pretty important to know. Now we're gonna move on to some common acronyms. The first one is gonna be gross vehicle weight rating. What this refers to every vehicle from the manufacturer is gonna have this label and the maximum amount of gross vehicle weight rating, the maximum amount of pounds or kilograms that that vehicle can carry. So what is gross vehicle weight rating? Simply stated, it is the uh, maximum amount of weight that is in a vehicle. That is including any cargo, passengers, fluids, also options on vehicles. So the same vehicle with different options may have different gross vehicle weight rating. So with the total combination of weight in that vehicle will be your gross vehicle weight rating. So moving along, we have our gross combined weight rating or GCWR. What that is, is the weight combination of your tow vehicle and what is towing. Now, for example, like in a class A motorhome, your motorhome plus whatever you're towing, whether that's a vehicle, stacker trailer, all the weight combined will be your gross combined weight rating. If you are, for example, towing a trailer, it will be your tow vehicle plus whatever your trailer. What you wanna make sure for all of these is not to exceed the manufacturer's recommended pound or kilogram for whatever your setup is. And the last one, a really important one is tail swing. And this goes for all RVs, but it's the point from your rear axle to the end of the RV, which can cause issues when driving. If you're not aware of it. So we did a video, actually two videos, driving videos, we'll link one up above. But that's something you really have to be aware of when you are driving. All right, so part two is some supplies, RV supplies. Now these are terms that you may not hear outside the RV world, some you would. First one, well, is wheel chocks. These are really important to make sure your RV doesn't take off. Roll away. Yeah, when it's when it's parked, that would not be Especially good. if you have a towable. Yes. You really need them. Yes. The next one is a stinky slinky. So that's a word you may hear, and that's a fun one. That's your poop chute, your sewer hose. Your sewer okay, hose, yeah. so a lot of times the RVs will have a place to store your stinky slinky in the back. You'll see, uh, you'll see that. So that's a, an important one you want to be aware of. All right, this is gonna be more, well, the first one's gonna be really uh, for motorized, a tow dolly, an apparatus that allows you to tow a vehicle. Tow dolly, traditionally, the two front wheels, they go up on the tow dolly and the back wheels spin. At the same point, probably the most popular way to tow is gonna be a flat tow or four wheels down. And that's when you use some kind of tow bar and you tow with your vehicles of four wheels down. Now, the thing is with this, especially with newer cars, a lot of them you can't flat tow. So be really careful uh, when you're choosing mm -hmm. a tow vehicle. If it's 
flat toe capable right. and you can check that out online. Now we're going to talk about the towables dually, right? You might hear what what's a dually. So a dually is some kind of truck that has dual rear wheels. So I guess technically our motorhome is a dually because the rear wheels, there's dual rear wheels on the back, but it kind of is used more for pickup trucks and traditionally dualies have a much higher tow capability, especially payload capability because mm -hmm. their axles are beefier. So you'll see on the bigger fifth wheels, those big giant, you know, 20,000 pound fifth wheels, they're almost always going to be towed with, with a, a dually. dually. And years ago, when Izzy used to say dually, I thought it was like some kind of fight or something, like D-U-E-L-Y. I like never dually. knew that. I know, I didn't tell you that. <laughs> but it's D-U-A-L-L-Y. All right, two other little words. Um, rig. Any RV can pretty much be called a rig. So you'll hear people say rig. That's what they're referring to. And then you have a toad, which also can, can be referred to as a, a dinghy. Uh, have I you heard know. of that? I haven't heard that. Yeah. So that is where you, uh, the car or whatever you're towing. Towed, right? T-O-A-D. T-O-A-D, right, not T-O-W-E-D. Following up on rig, a lot of people call their a coach also. Right. right. Well, then there's that whole, it's is a, whole a towable, a coach kind of thing, right. but whatever. All right, let's talk about some common, I guess, vocabulary, right, that's used in the RV world. So the first one's gonna be basement. Now, RVs don't have basements per se, like underground basements. Mm -hmm. Basement is kind of on more of the motorized and it's referring to what's underneath, right? So mm -hmm. like we have, when we refer to, I would say MJ, oh, this stuff is in the basement, the food's in the basement, the tools are in the basement. That's gonna be the cargo bay right. underneath. I guess you can talk about that like in a fifth wheel also, but yeah, yeah. we're in yeah. the uh, classic world so that's what a basement is known as right. the second thing is going to be holding tanks now we had no idea what holding tanks right like i didn't even know how you no. got water on an rv when we first got it <laughs> so traditionally there's two ways that you can get fresh water in an rv you have uh an actual hose that goes into your rv and provides you fresh water like like a garden hose mm -hmm. right and then you have holding tanks and holding tanks there's several in uh, rvs and that's going to be both towable and motorhome holding tanks there's going to be three holding tanks traditionally you're going to have your fresh water tank, and that's exactly <clears throat> what it says, that's fresh drinking water, that's a separate tank. They can be small tanks, they can be up to 150 or 200 gallons, depending on what kind of RV you have. Think about the fresh water tank is your supply for water. You turn on your faucet, it's coming from the mm -hmm. fresh water tank if you're using that. Second thing is gonna be your gray water tank. Now your gray water tank is gonna be all your wastewater, except from what comes from the toilet. We'll talk about that. So gray water, water from your bathtub, water from your sink, it's all gonna go into the gray water tank. The third tank you're gonna have is gonna be your black water tank, and I think you can use your imagination and know what this is. Black water tank is what your toilet, the, the remnants of your toilet goes into, okay? So that is another tank, and it's gonna be, if you have one toilet, some RVs have two mm -hmm. toilets, that is where your black water tank is, and it's never, well, it won't be mixed. Some bigger motorhomes you can, dump your gray into your black, you can do that. But for the most part, black is separate. Moving along, cockpit is a word that you'll hear in, in your drivable RVs. The front area where you sit is your cockpit, all right? And sometimes they refer to the driver, maybe me, mm -hmm. as, uh, you know, as the captain. The captain. <laughs> she, she wears a hat when she drives. <laughs> Next is chassis. It's not chassis, it's chassis. And that is what the RVs are built on. All right, if you have a chance to see a chassis before your RV is built, it's really, really cool mm -hmm. to see the foundation of your RV. Yeah, it's pretty cool. So the next thing is gonna be converter. And now this is gonna be for a lot of higher end motorhomes. Mm -hmm. So when we talk about converters, you remember we talked about like the bus style now. There are some actually bus style, like Prevo is an actual bus style company. So when you're talking about converters, there are companies that will take, for example, like a Prevo bus, Shell, Marathon Coach, Liberty Coach, Millennium, all, all these different converters. And then they build, they convert that commercial bus, bus Shell, to a motorhome. They fabricate all the luxuries in there and put all the tanks and the electricity. So that's what tradition to call a converter. We're gonna talk about, you're gonna hear this one a lot, slides or slide outs. Some people say bump outs. I think the appropriate that's term- like old school, The appropriate man. term is slide or yeah. slide outs. Your motor home can only be, I believe, a maximum of 102 inches. That's both on, uh, fifth wheels and on motorhomes. They can't be wider than 102 <clears throat> inches going down the road. So you can't go down the road like, you know, just taking up you five lanes. Don't drive with your slides out. Can't on. do that. 
<laughs> but Newmar, back in the day, they came out with a slide out on motorhomes. And what that does is there are actual walls that slide out. So when you get to camp, you're nice and narrow, and then you just hit these buttons and these, these walls, they come mm -hmm. out and they greatly, greatly increase mm -hmm. the mm -hmm. amount of space you have. Now, slide outs can number motorhomes, the max is like four. I haven't seen more than four. Fifth wheels. Fifth wheels, six, you can have can six. Trip. We, and believe me, they make a huge difference. Mm -hmm. Some of these fifth wheels look like New York City apartments inside, so. <laughs> Bigger than. There's advantages and disadvantages to having both of them, and we can do another video of that, but for this video, we're not gonna, but that was just the terminology of slide outs. Right, next thing is, let me check here, leveling jacks, all right, these are very important. So you can level your coach, coach very important. or RV. RVs need to be level when you are set up or things just ain't gonna work right. Doors aren't going to open right. The appliances mm -hmm. may not work right. So you might be kind gonna... of like a fun house. Right. Moving around. Right. Talking a little bit more about leveling jacks, there's usually two type. Uh, there's going to be manual, and that's going to be mm -hmm. on your lower end mm -hmm. uh, RVs. And then most things like over $40,000, they're going to have electric or even more so like automated. So we have mm -hmm. automated, mm -hmm. and MJ pulls into a spot. She loves it. She just like hits auto level and it goes zzz, and does its thing. And at the end, after like two minutes, it's level. Well, we For the most have part. to use a little extra help from Level Mate Pro. And then the last thing, uh, term is LP. If you hear LP, it usually stands for propane. All right. Liquid so, propane. Yeah. Right. Well, I mean, it means propane, yeah. but that's what it, it stands for. And LP on the, the middle of the range motorhomes and almost all trailers, that's going to be a big source for your stove mm -hmm. um, as well as your heating. So that's the, a lot of them will have uh, LP on board. Now let's talk about some basic things regarding camping. So types of camping. And again, this is something we didn't know, so we feel this is important. So when you go to a campground, there's usually gonna be three types of camping, right? It's gonna be full hookups, partial hookups, or dry camping. MJ's gonna talk about dry camping. I'm gonna talk about full and partial hookups. So full hookups is exactly what it says. It's uh, you have access to unlimited water, unlimited electricity, unlimited sewer. Now, if you have those three things, you can camp for a very long time. Partial hookups is gonna be not all of those things I just mentioned. <laughs> usually what it's gonna be is either water and electric, no sewer, water, I'm sorry, usually electric, no water, no sewer. That's usually what it is. But for the most part, it's usually water electric. We will sometimes camp that way, but we like yeah, full hookups. Yeah, yeah, we have. So the next one is uh, dry camping or what you'll call boondocking. And that is no hookups. So you're free. So you got to fill those tanks before you go. You have to let that water last. All of those things. It's a little more challenging, but people that do it really get the hang of it and learn how to do it well. Some, there's some argument. I think some people say it's not true boondocking unless you're in the really middle like of out in the environment, you know, and you're not. But uh, to each his own. But that's basically what it means. And if you're asking questions regarding filling your tanks, we talked about the fresh water tank. You do have holding tanks on mm -hmm. most RVs. And they, like I said, they can range from, you know, 20 gallons up to 150 and that's a, a tank and you usually have a pump in there and you will use water from that fresh water tank if you're not hooked up to some kind of city water source. So the next thing we're going to talk about, mooch docking. Mooch docking is exactly what it sounds. You pull into somebody's place, usually a home. Like we have a driveway and we have essentially full hookups. We have a 50 amp service. We have water. We have a dump. So we could host mooch docking if mm -hmm. we need it. But that's what you would be, either a You're friend mooching. or a place. <laughs> and you just go in and you take advantage of their free services. You're right. The next one is Wally docking, which is Walmart. Boondocking, mm -hmm. plain and simple. You park in a Walmart parking lot. Many of them are great about it. I know many over the years have stopped allowing it. So you really need to check before you decide to do that, which one you're going to. And touching a little bit more on that, there's other places like Bass Pro mm -hmm. uh, stores and Cabela Cracker and Barrel. we love Cracker Barrel. Yeah. They have RV parking. Little note here, if you do those things, don't be a jerk. Don't leave your litter out there. Don't set up the barbecue outside because that is what will ruin it for everybody right. else. So, well, last one is going to be work camping, and Amazon is famous for this, but there is work camper jobs everywhere. And essentially what that is, is that a company or a business will hire you to work for them. And in exchange, there's either usually a uh, offer of full hookups, right? Or full hookups and a salary, or maybe just a salary, and then you pay for mm -hmm. yeah, a discount. Yeah. But essentially you're RV camping and you're working at the same time. 
All right, so let's talk about the types of RVers. And again, this is, uh, was very foreign to us when we first started, so we just want to explain some common terminology you may hear. So you have your full-time RVers, and that is exactly what it sounds like. These are people that live in their RV full-time. A lot of times they have just given everything up and they downsize or they're out for adventure, retired, whatever it may be, they live in their RV full time. The second terminology we're gonna use term is newbie. And that is somebody that's new to RVing. We were there, everybody was there at some point, whether it was 30 years ago or six months <laughs> ago. Somebody that's new to RVing. Next is part-timer, so that's what we are. So part-timers are people that have a sticks and bricks, but you, which is a house, and you head out on the road for weekends, week trips, two week trips, whatever. Ever, but you always come back to your home and you do these short trips. Most timers is another one, which is what we plan on doing in about four and a half years, where you again have that sticks and bricks, but you head out for much longer periods of time, months at a time. That is something that we are planning on doing. Then you have your snowbirds. Snowbirds are people that live, say like in New Jersey and head south with the geese for the winter and spend those warmer months out of the cold. Or out west, along with Arizona yeah. too. Yes, yes, south, southwest. Okay, finally, we're gonna talk about certain items that you may not think of if you're getting into RVing that you're gonna need. And we'll talk about each one very quickly. The first one is gonna be a here. surge protector. I would highly recommend you get a surge protector. And what that does is when you are plugged into shore power at a campground, well, sometimes these campgrounds are really old or they just don't mm -hmm. maintain their electrical systems and they have surges. And RVs can be very complicated. And the last thing you wanna do is destroy the electrical system in your RV. So what a surge protector does, it monitors, a lot of them will do, uh, the EMS ones will both monitor excessive voltage or voltage that's below minimum. So it will cut off the electricity to your motorhome if it senses some kind of error. Very important to have, we do have one. Second thing, sewer hose. Now, if you buy a new RV, you're gonna be given a sewer hose mm -hmm. from the dealership. Do not use the sewer hose. There are plenty of sewer hoses out there to use. We actually did a video on a lot of these. We will link it above, 12 essential items every mm -hmm. RV issue. Yeah. have but you definitely gonna need a sewer hose because you gotta dump you what's in that tank crap. somehow <laughs> uh, water pressure regulator this is something that goes on the water source at a campground and it regulates the pressure of the water that's being allowed to go into your RV. Most RVs, their maximum 60 PSI. You have to remember, some of these RV parks, they are supplying water for, it could be 500, mm -hmm. 1,000 different RVs. So sometimes the pressure, it varies. It could be you know 30 pounds at one point, it could be like 80 pounds. When you have a regulator, like we do, we set it at 45 pounds. If it doesn't reach there, it doesn't reach there. But if it goes over, you're always we're at good. 45 pounds. So we're well under what our maximum uh, PSI is recommended. The next thing is gonna be a water hose. Now, I talked earlier about a garden hose. You really shouldn't use a, gar a garden hose because there's chemicals in there that will leach into the water. They actually make RV specific fresh water drinking hoses. Again, we linked them in the video that that we mentioned, definitely get one of these and they have heated ones for the winter also. Next thing, talking about the sewer hose, you need toilet paper. And, and people ask all the time, what kind of toilet paper do I need? Look, they sell RV specific toilet paper. You don't have to get that. Septic safe, definitely. Septic safe, yes, is is fine. But we get, you would go to Walmart and get that RV toilet paper. It's, you know, but you don't have to get that. Next thing is toilet chemicals, important, all right, to keep your black tank in good shape. Did a video, we'll link it up here. The next thing is levelers and chocks, which we had talked about before. You need those. You have to keep your coach level and safe from rolling away when you're in one spot. And then the last thing is tools. Tools, tools, tools. We can't say enough Harry about tools. tools. Things are gonna go wrong and you're going to need those tools to fix. Well, not only tools, know how to use the tools. <laughs> because you could have them if you know how to use them. So mm -hmm. yes, things will go wrong in the RV and you gotta know how to fix it as best you can. So these are, I mean, it's just a drop in the bucket, but there's so much more to learn. But these are things that'll give you a good start in understanding the terminology of RVing. Those of you that are not newbies and you're still here watching, put in the comments below some other things that'll help the newbies out because there's plenty more. And for myself and MJ, we thank you guys for watching. We'll see, see you, you on, on the road. road.